If you send me legislation that does not guarantee every American private health insurance that can never be taken away, you will force me to take this pen, veto the legislation, and we'll come right back here and start all over again. That was back in 1994. Tonight, President Obama will stand in the very same place as Bill Clinton, but we may not get a pen-waving moment. We are on full lookout for any props. Top Line starts right now. Hello and welcome to ABCNews.com's Top Line. I'm David Chalian. And I'm Rick Klein. Each weekday, we're here bringing you the very latest political headlines, reporting, insight, analysis, everything you need and want to know about politics. And it's Twitter.com slash The Note if you want to be part of the conversation, offer up questions for our guests, comments, you name it. The stakes could not be higher. Indeed. The speech. Everything comes down to the speech tonight. President Obama going before a joint session of Congress to outline his plans in more specificity, more detail than we've heard in the past on health care reform. But, David, it looks like he is going to stay a little bit open on the issue of the public option. That's going to be one of the headlines out of tonight is where he comes down. But it, it sounds like from his comments this morning to Robin Roberts on Good Morning America, we're, we're not going to hear a substantially different position than we have in the past from the president. Right. It sounds like he's going to repeat that it cannot add to the deficit by one dime, that that'll sort of be the big veto threat. Uh, but and certainly no red lines over the public option, though clearly still going to argue for its inclusion, just not saying that his signature won't get on the bill without it. Uh, it will it be enough to assuage liberals? We'll continue to watch that. Republican response. Well, it's coming a little earlier than the primetime response. We're first getting a hint of it from Sarah Palin. Yes, remember her, the former governor of Alaska, has taken to the op-ed page in the Wall Street Journal today uh, to show continued opposition to President Obama's health care plan. She kind of doubles down on this idea of death panels. You remember when she used that term over the summer, it was widely debunked. Uh, it was a totally inaccurate portrayal of what was being discussed about end-of-life care, end-of-life sessions, uh, through a Medicare doctor, she now is saying, well, the real death panel is this independent Medicare uh, committee that Obama wants to set up, like a BRAC military base closing kind of thing. She says that's the real death panel now. Death panels live. And, and dare I say, she writes, dare I say death panels? Yes, she dares say it. She dares say it. <laughs> we've, uh, she, we've called on the dare. We're out there. But there will be a formal Republican response after the speech tonight from a cardiothoracic surgeon who serves as a Republican There's congressman Louisiana in the Republicans House, Charles are great, Bustani, yes. are great in this role, obviously. Mass maneuverings. No Kennedy in the race for, for the, to, to succeed Ted Kennedy in the Senate means lots of Democrats are interested. They are staking out different positions. We see Mike Capuano, a liberal from Somerville, Massachusetts, who's the latest to jump in the race. Uh, it still looks to be Martha Coakley's race to lose on the Democratic side. And intriguing, we have now a self-funded Republican, Christy Myhos, who was running for governor and wasn't really favored to win that primary. It looks like he's going to jump into the Senate race as well. So he's not as convinced that a Democrat will be replacing Ted Kennedy? I'm still mostly convinced. Oh, still mostly convinced. Okay. And <laughs> Finally, court session. Yes, Sonia Sotomayor, after she had her investiture ceremony yesterday at the court, actually sits on the bench, and here's her first case. This is interesting because the Supreme Court is actually rehearing a case. They want to re-explore uh, some campaign finance legislation, a bit, a, a narrow slice of that McCain-Feingold bill, dealing with an anti-Hillary Clinton movie that came out during the primary season and whether or not it really served as an ad or if it was a, a moment of free speech, somebody creating a movie and, and getting it out there because it was funded by corporations. It'll be very interesting to see. The, the tea leaves seem to think that the court may try to restrict some of that McCain-Feingold campaign finance reform. And that would be huge. Obviously, would be huge implications uh, far beyond uh, the, the, even the next, the next several election cycles. This is going to be a big deal. But for court watchers, we will get audio hearings of the argument today, so we'll hear Sonia Sotomayor ask questions for the first time. It should be interesting. We're going to begin with a special guest who's up on Capitol Hill all the way from Hollywood, California, uh, movie actress Christina Ricci, who is also the national spokesman for the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network, uh, one of the largest organizations out in the country fighting sexual abuse. Uh, Ms. Ricci, thank you very much for being with us today. And, and oh, no, let, thank you. let me begin just, what are you doing up on Capitol Hill? What are you lobbying for with this organization? Well, um, right now we're meeting with um, several members of Congress, um, just asking them for their full support of a different legislature, uh, the Adam Walsh Act, um, the Violence Against Women Act, and uh, the Debbie Smith, Debbie Smith Act. What's the, what's the most important thing that, that you'd like to see Congress do when it comes to supporting victims of, uh, of rape and other sexual violence? Well, um, right now, you know, we, the, the National Sexual Assault Hotline 
gets its funding under the Adam Walsh Act. And um, there, the demand for the National Sexual Assault Hotline has, has grown double in one year. Um, and our funding has gone down. And, uh, you know, the, 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 what the National Sexual Assault Hotline does is it connects you to over 1,100 different rape crisis centers around the country. So it'll connect you to your local rape crisis center where you can receive treatment and counseling, anonymous. Uh, you can report your crimes if that's what you want to do. Uh, but, but the funding for those rape crisis centers, like for instance, in uh, California, all funding for those centers was recently cut. So uh, survivors who call the National Sexual Assault Hotline and need help are being directed to places where they're then put on a waiting list or can't receive the help at all that they need. Right. And so that's something that we really need people, we really need um, this Appropriations Committee to, uh, to support us. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, it's not the easiest thing for a celebrity like yourself to try to jump into the public sphere. What made you get involved in this and, and want to uh, be involved in this cause? Well, I, you know, I, I've been involved in this, you know, kind of in the background since, since I was like 17 years old. And, um, and then, you know, in the past couple of years, uh, there, were, there was a, a part I played that the woman suffered from rape trauma syndrome, and then after that, Rain asked me to be their spokesperson. And I mean, I just feel like this, you know, the FBI says that, this, that rape is the most violent crime, second only to murder. And, um, you know, rapists have proven to be career criminals. We know that. Um, and I just feel like it's, it's, there's so many victims and it's, it's not, the victims of this are not, they're not high risk, high risk citizens. They're, you know, your brothers, your daughters, your mother. Um, this affects so many people and it's something that has such a negative stigma and keeps victims from really getting the help that they need. And it's it's abhorrent to me. Really. The, the, the film the film you were referencing, I assume, was Black Snake Moan. I've seen you, you talk about your, what what is it that, about your work there, and what did you learn out of your work there that uh, that changed your perspective on this? Well, you know, I knew a lot about rape trauma syndrome already. I, I, I've read about I've read a lot about women, you know, women's issues and women's studies, and that was something that I, I actually did know quite a bit about. So when I read that screenplay, I recognized what the character was suffering from. And rape trauma syndrome to so many people is so confusing because they don't really understand the psychology that goes behind what happens to somebody once they've been raped and left to deal with this violent crime the rest of their life um, without treatment. And so I wanted to do that. I wanted to do that movie so that I could I could show that I could show what happens to a woman who does not receive the help that she so desperately needs. And and uh, sorry, uh, uh, Christina, I just want to get a sense also, beyond uh, what your work is with Rain, are you somebody who is interested in politics? Are you sort of a junkie of this? When, if you were at home tonight, would you be tuning into the president's speech tonight on your own? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely interested in politics. I'm really looking forward to what Obama has to say. I know we have, we have a, um, a cocktail reception tonight for Rain, and as soon as the speech goes on, we will be turning it on and everyone will be turning to watch. And how does this, um, how does this, the healthcare debate, how has it impacted uh, with, these, with these issues? If you're someone who doesn't have health insurance, what does it mean for the services that you can access as a victim? Well, see, that's the thing. This, this has a lot to do with healthcare because, um, you know, people without healthcare can go to these public, these, these publicly funded services, these social services, and get the help that they need, the medical help that they need. And if you cut all the funding to them, you're adding just even more, uh, even more stress to, to the, the whole healthcare debate. I mean, this is really a healthcare issue. People who are, people who suffer, um, suffer from, people who are raped um, uh, tend to, are twice as likely to suffer from alcoholism, drug addiction, uh, eating disorders, 
suicide, and all of those things are things that need to be dealt with. Uh, for they're all mental health issues, and they're think post-traumatic stress disorder. It reverberates through the uh, entire healthcare community. Clearly, uh, Christina Ricci, national spokesman for Rain. Thank you very much for being here. We appreciate you taking the time. Thank you for having me. Good luck up on the hill. Thanks. <laughs> We're going to have more Top Line in just a moment with Anna Marie Cox setting the stage for tonight's big speech. Don't go anywhere.